What's going on everybody? Barry here again with Specatech. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be doing the compression testing and room measurements for the SVS PB2000 Pro. But before we get into that, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe, tick the little bell icon so you can be notified when my next video drops. So those of you that already know, I did uh, an unboxing of the SVS PB2000 Pro uh, last week. If you want to check that out, just uh, look in the top right hand corner of this video and I'll tag it in there. So I've been playing with this subwoofer for about a week now. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys some of the room measurements so you have uh, a general understanding of the performance. Now obviously this is going to be uh, specific to my room, but at least it'll give you uh, some indication of what the subwoofer is capable of. But keep in mind that the measurements in your room would be different. It's not necessarily going to look exactly like mine. Alright guys, I'm going to cut right to the chase with this one. Let's get into the video right after the intro. Alright, so as I said, I'm, today I'm going to be doing a video on the uh, room measurements from the PB2000 Pro by SVS. So I did compression testing with Odyssey and then again without Odyssey. Keep in mind that I measured the subwoofer only, so I was not measuring speakers with these measurements. So you are going to see a roll off at where I have my crossover set for my speakers. But uh, mainly what I'm trying to show you guys is the, the low end bass along with some of the mid bass. Uh, most, most of you are going to have your crossover set somewhere around the same area I do, which is at 80 hertz. Uh, so like I said, you will see a roll off there. Let's get into it. I'm going to show you guys my computer screen. All right, guys, so now that you can see my screen, I already have the measurements uh, pulled up that are showing the uh, compression testing with Odyssey. So this is with Odyssey running. And as you can see on this top blue line here, I was already starting to see some compression uh, in between probably about 19 hertz to... Uh, about 21 hertz or so you can see here it started to compress so that's what I'm going to call compression so I'm going to remove that last line because it was already compressing so we'll call this green line here as our top uh, performing line for that compression testing with Odyssey uh, so you can see we're hitting about 107 decibels at 22 and a half hertz so not bad for a single 12 inch driver uh, I wasn't disappointed in the subwoofer at all. As a matter of fact, I was I was impressed for it being a single 12 inch driver. Keep in mind that I'm coming from quad 18 inch drivers, so it's not like I was blown away. It's pretty hard to blow, blow me away when I've experienced quad 18s uh, with 4300 watts peak each. But for a 12 inch subwoofer, this thing does the job. It does a very good job actually. So let's uh, go back to the compression testing here. So. With this green line here, they, they claim to get down to 16 hertz with the subwoofer. And I mean, they do, but in my room, it's not exactly flat. So at about, at about 16 hertz, we're around 99 decibels or 100. Yeah, about 99 decibels at 16 hertz. Um, so from our peak of 107, we're down seven, eight decibels from our peak, uh, which isn't terrible, but it's not, uh, it's, I wouldn't consider that flat, but we do get down to 16 Hertz with uh, usable output, I would say. And then uh, over here at around 53 Hertz is our next peak. And we're about 105 decibels um, over here. So let's turn off all these other measurements. So again, these are the measurements that I took with Odyssey. And then we'll move on to the measurements I took without Odyssey. And as you can see here, once I hit volume of negative one on the reference scale, so uh, minus one dB, I was, or you could already see compression here uh, in, the, in the earlier Hertz uh, around 15 Hertz. And then again, it started compressing probably right about here at 17 Hertz to, to about 22, 23 hertz it compressed. So we're gonna remove that red line. And that was at negative one on the reference scale for volume. When I was using Odyssey, uh, the compression happened at zero dB on the reference scale. So just a, just a reference for you guys, it basically happened at the exact same time within one dB on the volume. So let's remove all of these. So our peak for compression is at negative three on the, on the reference scale for volume. And again, we peaked around the same. We peaked at about 107 decibels uh, at about 23 and a half hertz. And again, 
they claim to get down to 16 hertz. So in my room, 16 hertz was at about 101 decibels without Odyssey. So you do gain a little bit of dB without Odyssey there, but then you have this nasty null, uh, which again will be specific to my room, so it's not necessarily gonna be the same for you guys, but I had a null here at 31 hertz, uh, which dipped down to 97 decibels. And then again, my roll off uh, is from, or this roll off that you see on the higher hertz, that's from the crossovers that I have set on my speakers. So the, the main thing I wanted to show was basically from probably about 60, 60 hertz or so, and then down to 16 hertz, because that's what uh, SVS is claiming that these subs can get to. And they do, they do. But like I said, you're, you're losing uh, six, seven decibels, regardless if you have Odyssey on or Odyssey off. Um, but they do hit 16 hertz. So from a 12 inch driver, not too bad. So for comparison, here is the measurement with Odyssey. So as you can see, it is definitely flatter than the measurement uh, that, that was without Odyssey. But you do gain a little bit of dB in the lower end, starting at about 20 and a half hertz. And then I only uh, included measurements down to 15 hertz. So between 20 and a half hertz and 15 hertz, you do gain some dB without having Odyssey on but you get a much flatter response with Odyssey and then you gain some dB in the, uh, in the mid range base. So you got a pretty significant difference here. You're at about 103, almost 104 decibels at 80 Hertz. And then here without Odyssey, you're at 92.8 decibels at 60 Hertz. So you, you gain a lot here. You may lose a little in the low end, but it's not as significant as what you gain in some of these mid bass frequencies. And then again, you're gaining that flatter response with Odyssey. <clears throat> so guys, I'm not, uh, not gonna talk too much about the, the room measurements. They pretty much speak for themselves. I'll uh, give you a chance here. I'll turn, all, I'll turn the compression testing back on for where I had uh, Odyssey on. And as you can see, when I hit uh, plus two on my, on the volume, on the reference volume, that's when I started hitting compression. So that one we don't count. So add zero dB on the volume, that's our peak measurement. And then our peak measurement for without Odyssey was at negative one dB on the reference volume scale, um, where we do gain a little bit. Oh, sorry, that was with compression. So here is the one without compression. So my, my preference would be if, if I were to keep this subwoofer, I would leave Odyssey on, but it's gonna be different for your guys' room. And here again is the compression, the compression uh, without Odyssey. So I do remove this red line as there's heavy compression there. You do see a little bit of compression on this line here, uh, but it was slight, so I decided to, you know, give the subwoofer a little bit of slack here and, and consider this the peak the peak measurement, even though there is some slight compression here uh, from 17 to about 20, 21, 22 hertz. All right guys, so thanks for joining me on this video. I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit shorter. Um, the, like I said, the room measurements speak for themselves. So if you have any questions, make sure you drop them down below. And if this video helped you out, if you're looking for a PB2000 Pro and this video helped you, make sure you smash that like button. It really does help out the channel. Uh, my next video is gonna be the full review of the SVS PB2000 Pro. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And as always, stay techy.